these here porkers in this here parish don't appreciate me. Antique parochial there, ma'am, antique parochial. We have given away a matter of 20 loaves and a cheese mark this very blessed afternoon, and still their pork is not contented. Of course they're not. When would they be? Sweet, Mr. Bumble. Very sweet indeed, ma'am. Oh, you little thing, do you? You're the cat, though, they see. And kittens, too, I declare. Oh, yes, I'm so fond of them. They can't imagine. And they're so fond of their own, too. Mrs. Corney, ma'am, I must say that any cat or kitten that can live with you, ma'am, and not be fond of his own home, that's me, you gent, ma'am. I don't deserve to live in it. Oh, Mr. Bumpole. It's no use excusing facts, ma'am, and idiot, and I will turn to myself with pleasure. Then you are a cruel man, Mr. Bumpole, a very hard-hearted man and all. Hard-hearted, Mrs. Corney? Hard? Are you hard-hearted, ma'am? Oh, it's a curious question. What can you want to know?
general terms, five pounds. Well, as a matter of fact, I was leaving the boy. Good. Then it's settled. Five pounds, please. If you don't mind, cash upon life. Cash upon life, Mr. Bumble. Mr. Salbury. What is it? What do you want now? My dear, would you have the goodness to come out of here alone, my precious? What do you want? Well, what is it? My dear, I've called Mr. Bumble. Hello, Mrs. Salberry. Uh, we may consider taking this toy to help in the shop. Dear me, he's very small. Yes, he is rather small. There's no denying it. He'll grow, Mr. Salberry. He'll grow. I dare say he will, and I'll be tall and quick. They're a waste of time, these workhouse boys. They always cause more to keep them what they're worth. Still, you men always think you know best. Well, what are you going to do with him? There's an expression of melancholy on his face. It's rather interesting. It'll make a delightful coffin for the one. A what? Uh, I don't mean for the adults' practice, but for the children's. It would be nice to have one proportion, my sweet. A superb effect, and the more I think about it. For once, anyway, just another one. You might have had a decent idea. Very well, then, boy. What's your name? Over, over twist, man. A singular name. Oi, now. What are you choosing? Yours, Mr. Bumble. Hi, Mr. Salbury. How's that, Mr. Bumble? The boy's mother came to us next to you, brings a child into the world, takes one of him and promptly dies, without leaving so much as a forwardy name and address. Dear, dear, whatever next? Well then, Oliver Twist, do you think you can look like that gentleman up there? Yes, ma'am. Maybe if I had a black hat. Never mind about black hat. The boy is quite right. Get the boy top hat, Henry. These things <coughs> must be done.
and your hand and me to open up the blinds with our young scallywag. Hello, Noah. I saved a nice little bit of bacon for you from Master's breakfast. Oliver, shut the door and take their meat and your tea. Go over there, Liam, and make haste, because they want you to mind the shop. Do you hear? Do you hear, workhouse? No, no, what a tease you are. Let the boy alone. Let the boy alone? I'm giving him a change, you see. <coughs> Everybody left him alone. His mother left him alone. His father left him alone. Everybody left him alone. Except dear old kind old man. Hey, Charlotte? You are the one. Workhouse? How's your mother? You leave my mother out of this. She's dead. And what she died at workhouse? Never you mind. Oh, but I do mind. We better say any more, see? Better not, better not. If you don't mind, then she give it. My mother, he says. She was a nice one. You know, workhouse, it can't be helped now. And of course, it couldn't have been helped then. I mean, I'm very sorry for it and all that. But it has to be said. Your mother was a regular, right down bad. And what did you say? A regular, right down bad. It was a good thing she thought what she did. She could do an hard labour in prison. But it's not. <laughs>
running hard. Arsene must be running away from the beak. Oh, what? I don't tell me better what a beak is, but my it's pickled to birds got. My eyes, how thin can you get? For your information, the beak is a monstrate. Hungry, starving. But no mother. No. Father? No. Lovely. Bonnie was we're having today, shall we think? Uh, is that in London? Yes. Got any lodging? No. Money? Not a farthing. Do you live in London? <coughs> when are we home? I suppose you want some place to sleep tonight. Are you accommodated? No, I don't think so. Then accommodate your opinion, old lady. I know a certain hour. Very respectable old gentleman, what is it? What will give you? Lodging for nothing. Have you been to ask for the train? <coughs> what is it? That is, if you love a gentleman, what he knows introduces you. And does he know me? I should say he does. And so, who is this respectful gentleman there? Is he a charity gentleman? <coughs> well, I wouldn't exactly say that. <coughs> Not exactly. If I introduce you to him, it's all right. Because I have to be a particular favourite, Mr. Fagin. That's his name, Mr. Fagin. Come on. Once I've been introducing you to him, I best know who you are. My name's Oliver, Oliver Twist. And my name is Jack Dawkins. Better known than my most intimate friend of the Yardful Soldier. Please meet you, Mr. Dawkins. <coughs> Come to think of it, I ain't got no intimate friend. What's the this? You're coming with me. Are you sure Mr. Fagin won't mind?
I shall have the honor of your uh, intimate acquaintance here. All right, leave him alone, leave him alone. Oh. We're very glad to see you, Oliver, very indeed, don't you? Right, put up a tub on the fire for Oliver. Charlie, take up the sausages. Yes, now. Shut up into the kitchen. <laughs> Are you, my dear? There's quite a few of them in there. Yeah. We just hang them out ready for the wash. The wash. That's all, Oliver. That's all. Is this a laundry room, sir? Well, the laundry would be a very nice thing indeed. But our line of business pays a little better, doesn't it, boys? Yeah. You see, you Oliver.
might be, but very nicely made. Well done. Uh, ingenious workman, isn't he, Oliver? Very ingenious, sir. Yeah. What have you got, my dear? No, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a very nice Novak, don't you? Very nice indeed. Uh, no, you haven't picked out the initial two, well. You'll we'll have to pick out later with, with a needle. Uh, we'll have to learn how to do this, Oliver. Will he, boys? Yes! yes. yes. <laughs> but in the meantime, you'll have to learn how to make bullets like Dodger and Charlie here. You'll like that, wouldn't you, my dear? Oh, well, yes, Mr. Fogg, if you'll teach me. Certainly, my boy, certainly no thing. Just do everything you see Dodger and Charlie do. Make them your models, my dear. Especially Dodger. <coughs> He's going to be a right to have Bill Sykes. Bill Sykes! <laughs> Tell me, my dear, is there a handkerchief protruding from my pocket? Yes, sir, I'm just in the corner. See if you can take it from me without my noticing, like you saw the others do. <coughs> Ago. No, sir. Two minutes ago. 
know. Be sure, be sure.
missed you. I love you, that's why I say to you. Look at my dirty old dog. That's you. Give me one last look. God bless you. Remember that I built you.
were you in the back, don't you?
stay, my boy. Much better, thank you, sir. You may stay here or is it, sir? If you wish, my dear boy, if you wish. Can't you, Mrs. Bedwin? Of course, sir, of course. Here's the doctor to see you. You are a great deal better, are you not? Yes, thank you, sir. Yes, I know you are. You're hungry too, aren't you? No, sir, not really. Uh, no, I know you're not hungry. He's not hungry, Mrs. Bedwin. Now I'm the doctor. Uh, you're sleepy, aren't you? No, sir, not really. Uh, no, I know you're not sleepy. He's not sleepy, Mrs. Bedwin. No, Doctor, he's certainly not sleepy. <coughs> not thirsty, are you? That boy's thirsty. I'll eat my head. Are you? Yes, sir, rather thirsty. Ah, just as I expected. It's very natural he's to be thirsty. But you may give him a drink, Mrs. Bedwin. What should I give him a drink, Doctor? You may give him a little tea. Very good. May he get up today? I think he may. A bit of fresh air. <coughs> Don't keep him too warm, but make sure he doesn't get too cold. Will you have the good news? Certainly, Doctor, certainly. Just as soon as you and Mr. Farron know a phone call. Yes, yes, directly. You'll be glad to be up again, Oliver. Oliver, someone with the bed on your back. And make sure you wear that thick one and vest. I know what you damn boys are. And leave it off if you get half a chance. Thank you, Mr. See you down stairs. Doctor, do you know this extraordinary light between that boy's face and the portrait of my daughter Agnes? I can't say I do. I only know two sorts of boys. Mealy-faced boys and beefy-faced boys. And what sort of that? Uh, mealy. Uh, where did you say it came from? Didn't I tell you? He was arrested for stealing my pocket handkerchief. Uh, what, sir? It was all a mistake. And when the shopkeeper told us what really happened, and the magistrates released him, I found myself bringing him back here to make what amends I could. But uh, he's... he's just... But I must confess, I do find myself strangely attached to the boy. But he's deceiving, my good friend. He's had a fever. What of that? Fevers aren't particular to good people, are they? Bad people have fevers, don't they? He stole from me once, and he'll steal from you again. He didn't steal anything. It was the other boys. I'm sorry, sir.
have you little dog, you? Get on home! What books are these? Mrs. Brownlow. You've been stealing again, have ya? He's nothing but a thief and a vagabond. Get out, you little thief. Go on. That's right, take it off, I agree with you.
choking apart as me and the Lord be confessed but to say that I wasn't to sing I'm finding it hard
two weeks ago tomorrow it was done, it seems an age. I sow myself for a six teaspoons, a pair of sugar tongs, a milk pot, the small quantity of second hand furniture, and twenty pounds cash. Oh, I very reasonable, cheap. Dirt cheap. Cheap! You would have been dear at half the price, and dear enough I pay for you. Lord of God knows that. Are you going to sit there snoring all day? Gonna sit as I can think proper, ma'am. But though I was not snoring, I shall snore, gape, sneeze, laugh or cry. It's my humour. It's not to be my prerogative. Your prerogative? I said the word, ma'am. The prerogative of man is the command. And what is the prerogative of a woman, might I ask? To obey, ma'am. Your late unfortunate husband should have taught it to you. And then, perhaps, he still might have been alive today. And I wish he was. Poor man. You are the
information regarding the boy, Oliver Twist. They've come and asked Jack Edwards, and Bubble is the name, sir. <coughs> the young workhouse, where the boy was cared for, who made him his apprentice dinner in the papers, where he ran away from. Yes, yes. And do you know what has happened to him? Not no more than nobody. Well, what do you know of him? A little drink was given to the lad's dying mother, just before my dear wife passed away. The lad's dying mother, that is, <coughs> not my wife. Mrs. Bummer has kept it all this time. You say you left your workhouse and went to an undertaker's? Yes, I sold to Mr. Sowery, the undertaker, for five pounds. For five pounds? What, you mean to say you sold me like an animal? Well, ma'am, it was Mrs. Bummer actually who authorised this. Well, really? Then I shall see to it that none of you is employed and position of trust again. You may leave my house. I hope this little unfortunate little circumstance won't deprive me of my procure office. Indeed it will, and you may count yourself well off besides. It was Mrs. Bumble. She would do it. That is no excuse. You were present on the occasion of the selling of the boy, boy and in the more guilty one of the two in the eye of the law. The law supposes that your wife acts under your direction. If the law supposes that, then the law is an ass. If that's the eye of the law, then the law is a bachelor. And the worst I wish, and the law may do by experience. By experience! Show him out, please, Mrs. Bedwin. Come this way. Really, sir, what a dreadful way. How people like that could be put in charge of children, I don't know. Be locked up. That's he selling a child for five pounds. Mrs. Bedwin, take a look at this miniature. See who it is. Who makes me say sir? Yes, my daughter Agnes. And I have every reason to believe that Oliver was her son. Sir, can this really be? Oh dear, dear. Where can the poor boy be? We must find him, Mr. Brandon. We really must. Excuse me, sir. There's somebody at the front door. It's probably the butcher, no, by the sounds of that knock. I'll give him what for knocking on a genteel house in such a manner.
dark night. It's not enough for I. Oh. 